Okay, so I wanted to do a video on uh, something that just kind of struck me the other day as I was playing around with a couple different radar detectors. Uh, they have different implementations of how to actually handle uh, muting false alerts at low speeds. So if you're driving around at slow speeds, uh, how do you actually mute false alerts, like pretty much all false, false alerts, just to help keep uh, the noise level down? And it sounds like a really simple thing, but it, I just kind of started noticing that there's a, a variety of different ways to achieve, in theory, the same idea. And so uh, I wanted to show you guys with a couple different detectors, uh, different ways that this can be done. The most obvious way would be just uh, using GPS, right? Like uh, the Max 2 will do this. It's a perfect example. It's got a GPS chip built in and it's got a feature called a cruise alert. And the idea is when you're driving below a set speed, it'll go ahead and mute uh, the alerts just to help keep the noise down uh, when you're cruising around in town. So really simple, you know, it makes total sense. Uh, the ALPs, the anti-laser priorities, uh, when you integrate a uh, radar detector with them, if you have a GPS antenna, it'll do the same thing. You can set a speed and it'll mute signals below that. Uh, so you got GPS here in the MAX 2. Uh, the Passport has the feature as well, Cruise Alert. However, it does not have a GPS chip built in. So what it does is it actually relies on the phone. Uh, you can go in the phone and also enable the same feature, but rather than using the GPS chip in the uh, detector, it is reliant on the phone. And so unlike the Max 2 where it can do the feature all by itself, this one does require a phone to be paired in order for it to operate. But the principle is the same. Uh, you've got the same thing available with the V1. Um, on iOS, you have Stealth Assist, which will use your phone's GPS to mute below a certain speed. And then you also have uh, Savvy Emulation with uh, Android. Now, uh, before that was available, the V1 had a Savvy, which looks like this. It's a device that plugs into your vehicle's OBD2 port, and then uh, it has a little dial on the bottom, and so you basically set different speeds that you want. So, like, uh, here's 35 miles an hour, for example, and this would basically say, uh, any signals below this speed, 35 miles an hour, it would go ahead and auto automatically mute them. And so, rather than relying on GPS, uh, it's going to get that information directly from the vehicle. Um, it sounds at first like it's a little bit, you know, maybe older way to do it before all the GPS stuff came out, and that's true. Uh, there are actually some nice benefits uh, that I actually really like with Savvy that are not available with uh, GPS. Uh, number one, if you don't have GPS, uh, it's not going to work. And a great example of when that's beneficial is if you're driving around in a parking deck, uh, you'll lose GPS, and some parking decks do have uh, K-band transmitters for opening doors or monitoring when cars are coming through, that kind of stuff. And in those situations, uh, the slow speed muting with GPS stuff actually doesn't work, whereas Savvy actually does. So that's really nice. Uh, a second reason I like that feature is uh, some of these ones, it takes a little bit of time to actually get a GPS lock, especially if you've been sitting for a while and uh, you haven't turned your detector on in a while. It can take some time for the GPS to actually reacquire a signal. Uh, if your GPS is running off your phone, it'll take a little bit of time to launch the app, to uh, have the app connect for your phone to review everything. And so there's a little bit of time of when it's unpaired and it's not yet functioning. And so if you are in a uh, parking lot with a lot of K-band falses at a shopping center, for example, uh, you're going to be getting all those false alerts until your phone actually pairs with, uh, with the radar detector, gets the GPS sync, and then begins doing the lockouts. So kind of related to the low speed muting, the GPS lockout stuff, uh, it can take a little bit of time for GPS sync to sync. And so in those situations, uh, the Savvy is actually quite nice. And those are uh, two of the reasons why I actually really like it, even compared to the GPS. But that said, at um, this point, I still primarily do rely on my phone. Uh, works. There's some conflicts I've noticed with uh, Yavi 1 and Savvy, so I just do that. But whatever, that's neither here nor there. Um, and finally, the last one I wanted to uh, address, which was actually the inspiration for the video, was uh, the Cobra here. Uh, this one has uh, no GPS built in. It's called the 7800 BT, the SPX 7800 BT. And uh, like some of the other detectors, it relies on your phone for uh, getting the GPS speeds. And so on the screen there, it can actually tell you your speed when you're driving, but only when you're paired with your phone. If you don't have that, uh, you've got no directional information. 
Now, the way that it accomplishes low speed muting, you would think that it would operate like the other ones where it would just base it off the GPS and it says, hey, I'm traveling below a certain speed, mute signals. It doesn't do that. The Cobra implementation is called IntelliMute. And the idea with IntelliMute is it'll actually monitor uh, the RPM speed, right? The revs of the engine. And when your engine is uh, at low RPMs, it's assuming that you're traveling at low speeds, you're not really hauling or anything, and so it's gonna go ahead and mute. Uh, when your engine starts revving hard, independent of what speed you're going, uh, the idea is that it would then begin alerting. Uh, that's the theory anyways. Uh, it doesn't quite work for me in practice. And um, I mean, I would find like, I would set it at a certain level, like uh, 2000 RPMs, and I could rev my engine out to like 6000 RPMs and I'm still not getting any uh, alerts coming. It's still muting the signal. And so um, I was looking it up a little bit. In some vehicles, this feature doesn't work. For example, in diesels or in hybrids or electric vehicles, like that kind of stuff would obviously make sense. Um, I drive a Miata, a very standard gas engine, and it should work just fine. Uh, I have read that a number of other people have been having issues, and so I did a little bit of research to figure out uh, kind of the technology behind it and how it work. And the idea behind IntelliMute and how it can actually monitor your car's RPMs. Uh, the ignition coil will actually trigger the spark plug to make it fire, right? So it tells the spark plug to fire, 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 creates the spark, makes the piston fire, and uh, leads to the rotation of the engine. And so by monitoring that electrical spike in the vehicle's electrical system, uh, it'll actually see these spikes um, from the ignition coil and uh, based on those spikes can then determine what the RPM of the engine is. So uh, it actually does work. There is like, you know, it depends on the vehicle, of course, but yeah, it can work. Uh, I guess it's not a very good implementation with Cobra. Um, so in practice, it doesn't really seem to work very well. Also in theory, based on kind of the theory of it, it's not a good idea. And uh, I get the idea is like, okay, I'm not revving really hard. My engine is, you know, at a relaxed speed. So I'm, based on that, I'm not speeding. I'm not going crazy. I don't necessarily need, uh, you know, my radar alerts. Well, basing off the engine RPM is not necessarily a good idea. If you're idling at a stoplight, then yeah, your engine RPMs are going to be really low. Um, I had one situation where I was coming past a speed sign that I can actually pick up on the highway and I was in sixth gear. So my, you know, I was turning pretty low. And uh, because I was below the speed, I think, or above, it doesn't matter because it doesn't work right. <laughs> but assuming it was working right, if I'm just cruising on the highway in sixth gear and, uh, you know, got it in cruise control, whatever, if I'm not pushing really hard, but I'm actually below that speed uh, or that rev limit, my detector is not going to alert at all. And uh, it's actually kind of a pain to go in here and uh, set it and change the speed and lock it in, like rev your engine out and tell it, save this, um, this rev range is like my threshold. I mean, it's not a very intuitive and easily user adjustable feature. Like you have to go in and I'm just really not impressed. I mean, this kind of thing, you just, you set the speed. I say anything below 35 miles an hour, automatically do it. I never want to think about it again. And it just works, right? This kind of stuff, you have to go in there and, you know, set based on a certain RPM, uh, lock it in. And then, you know, if you're accelerating at low speeds, it's not going to work because then it'll start alerting. But then as you're, you know, maybe shift up a gear, your revs drop, all of a sudden the radar detection stop working. Um, at least in theory, if it worked this way, right? Uh, there's also an advanced version of their feature called IntelliMute and they call it IntelliMute Pro. And uh, the idea is in addition to simply muting your uh, radar alerts altogether, um, I notice there's like no even visual indication when it's working. It just detects nothing. It no audio alert, no visual alert. You have no idea that you're being clocked. Uh, you can with IntelliMute Pro will shut down the radar detection altogether. So not just the muting, but completely shuts down the radar stuff. And the reasoning behind that is if you're in an area where uh, radar detector detectors are in use because radar detectors are illegal, uh, it'll actually shut down the radar detection circuitry altogether. And that way it'll prevent any detection by radar detector detectors such as the Spectra or the VG2. Uh, that's one way of implementing it. It's a way of saying, I've got a product which uh, is very detectable. And I mean, actually all of these products here are detectable by the Spectra. 
Uh, this one actually has the ability to shut itself down and it's based off uh, Intellimute. And so when you're at really low revs, um, it'll actually shut down the radar detection capabilities altogether. Uh, because of the issues that I've mentioned earlier where it doesn't really seem to work properly and then even the whole, you know, high speed, low speed, whatever thing, what I would suggest instead is if you're worried about that kind of stuff, get a red line. I mean, don't go for something like that. Get a product that's actually undetectable by radar detector detectors in the first place, such as uh, the red line. Like this truly is undetectable, and so you don't have to worry about that kind of gimmicky technology. And you'll be able to detect radar uh, while radar detector detectors are in use. And so um, I'm not a fan of Intellimute, both in theory and in practice. Maybe in some other vehicles, I've heard that it does work better. Uh, it's pretty hit or miss, so I wouldn't necessarily count on it. But just that whole thinking of like a new way of implementing GPS, or not GPS, uh, low speed muting in general, was basically the, uh, the inspiration for creating this video. So that's what I wanted to talk about and just kind of some of the different ways that uh, low speed muting can be implemented using uh, radar detectors. So that's cool. Anyways, hope that was useful, fun to watch, kind of fun stuff to think about and see how people have done it. But there you go. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.